today we're here to talk about one of my favorite subjects, sleep. I love sleep. I, I definitely have grown to enjoy it a lot. It, it used to be back in my younger days, I would be annoyed at sleep that, you know, why do I have to waste so much time asleep when I could be productive, right? And so I wanted to talk a little bit about sleep, sleep cycles, naps, how to get the best sleep that we can. So we'll talk about that after the intro. Welcome to my journey of self-discovery, life balance, career success, and business creation. This podcast works to answer the question of how successful professionals like us stop drifting and get focused on keeping our careers and businesses growing rapidly while having a full, balanced, and vibrant life that we absolutely love. What we call the Third Power Life. And this is the Third Power Life Podcast. All right. Sleep, again, one of my favorite subjects, um, something that I actually need to go do very soon. <laughs> but I, I wanted to talk a little bit about like sleep cycles, um, how and when to take naps, and just generally talk a little bit about sleep. So I've been optimizing my sleep for many, many, many years. And one of the key things that has really helped me a lot is the sleep cycle, right? And this is for the normal people. A normal sleep cycle is about 90 minutes, right? Everybody has a slightly different variation of this, but in general, 90 minutes. And for me, that holds very true. Mine's actually about 80. But um, what I do is whenever I have to be up at a certain time, I kind of look at what are the sleep cycles going to be and when do I need to wake up, right? So if, say, I had a late night, I'm going to bed at midnight, right? And I have to be up at 5 a.m. to do something, which sounds horrifying, but it, it, it's true. Um, I'm actually better off waking up at 4.30, which is an hour and a half cycle, right? Then I am waking up at five, which is 30 minutes later. And the reason for that is the way that a sleep cycle works is, you know, when you first lay down, you kind of go into a, um, it's like light sleep, right? And, um, it's a very light sleep stage. You stay there for 15 to 30 minutes, generally, right? And then after that 15 to 30 minutes, you delve into like a deep sleep stage, okay? And, you know, as you go into the light sleep stage, your heart rate slows down, your brain does less complicated tasks, right? It's you know, that's where you're, you're slowing down all of that, right? You move into deep sleep, which is kind of that level three, right? Um, and that's where your body actually starts making repairs. So if you've been working out a lot or doing any type of heavy physical activity, this is a really important time, this deep sleep for your body to like repair muscles. And so it's that kind of a that kind of a thing, right? And then you slowly you go into into you know move up into a lighter sleep. Um, your body temperature decreases, your blood pressure decreases, um, and then from then you move back up. It's almost in a light sleep, but it's rapid eye movement. It's REM sleep. This is where we dream, right? And this is really incredibly important for our brains. It's where we're getting rid of a lot of like stress and, and it's, it's sort of like that the, the body makes repairs in the deep sleep. The mind makes repairs in the REM sleep is the way I always think about it. Right. And, you know, and so then that's usually at the 90 minute mark. And now you go back into, you know, light sleep for a little bit then back into deep sleep, back up to REM, and then you're in a, a light sleep mode at 90, at, you know, usually at, a, at an hour and a half. 
So I don't know if you have ever had the experience of sleeping, you know, you're asleep at night and you get waking up and you just can't wake up. You're like, uh, it's like you're, you're in a fog, right? You just, you, so your eyes barely open. You're just, you, you, it's like, you just can't think it's, it's so hard to get up. Right. That's because we woke up, we were awakened in a deep sleep cycle. We were deep asleep trying to come out of it. And it's just our brains in a fog and it's going to take us 15 minutes or so to get out of that and get back to normal thinking. Right. Um, and so that's why I said, when I know that I've got to be up, I will calculate, you know, within an hour and a half, right? So four and a half hours, six hours, seven and a half hours, seven and a half hours is my ideal sleep time, right? That's what I like to get because I've gone through for me personally, you know, now I've got the Fitbit, so I actually track sleep cycles and all of that. You know, my deep sleep happens early in the night. My REM sleep tends to happen later on in the, you know, in, in the evening as I'm, you know, as I'm sleeping. So after like four and a half or six hours, that kind of thing. Um, so my body's doing the, phys, you know, doing the, the recovery early in the, in the night. My mind's getting the recovery a little bit later. Um, but for me, I'm perfectly okay with six hours. Ideal is seven and a half. You know, if I go beyond seven and a half, even nine, eh, it's questionable, right? There are some days, don't get me wrong, some weekends where it's kind of nice to get that that nine hour sleep. But um, I have kids, so <laughs> that doesn't happen that often. Um, so so that's what I love the whole idea of sleep cycles. I think they're really helpful. You know, the, the idea of the 90 minute sleep cycle to schedule yourself and to get the maximum rest possible, you know, I'm all about optimizing experiences. So it's, you know, the first 30 minutes, you're in light sleep. The next, like, was it uh, 50 minutes or so, you're in deep sleep. <laughs> and then the last 10 minutes, you're back up in, in REM sleep and then back to light sleep. And then you kind of go through that whole cycle again. So if you want to optimize your sleep, aim for that hour and a half mark, right? I was like, now, Dan, you mentioned something about naps. Um, you know, it's so funny to me that uh, my childhood punishments have become my adult goals. You know, go to your room, read a book, take a nap. <laughs> right? That's that's become what I want to do. Um, and so... Uh, for naps, naps are an interesting thing, um, right? Because how long do I take a nap for? Um, here's the, the the Cliff Notes version. The ideal time for you to take a nap is either 20 minutes or an hour and a half. All right. Now, let's get into some explanation of that. Okay. So how long should we nap for? The The short version is either 20 minutes or an hour and a half. Okay, we're done. Uh, actually, let's dive back a little bit deeper into that. So the idea is that in order for you to have a good nap, the reason that it's 20 minutes is usually 30 minutes is where we go beyond light sleep and into deeper sleep. Okay, so you can take a nap of any any length, but with 20 minutes, you're going to wake up easily. You're generally going to have an energy boost, right? Um, it, you know, it's what we call a power nap. And it's because you're, you're in the, you go start as awake and you move into the light sleep where you're easily awakened. So like after the hour and a half, you're also at light sleep where you easily awaken. And so that's the ideal spot is at right at 20 minutes, right? To still be in light sleep, but have gone unconscious to the point where you've got some, some rejuvenation, right? Now you can sleep for half an hour, 
right? Uh, you know, the, the challenge with half an hour is you're going to be groggy when you wake up. It's going to be the, uh, right? And it's going to take a few minutes for you to get back to, you know, awake, if you will. But, you know, you will feel more productive. So a 30-minute nap is better than nothing, but 20 minutes is is ideal. Now, some people is like, well, I'll sleep for an hour. Okay, that's fine. Now, the challenge with an hour is you've now gone into deep sleep, so you're getting some of that repair, but you haven't had a chance to come back out of your of your cycle, right? So, you know, the the thing with an hour nap is your short-term memory will improve, right? Um, but you're still you're going to be groggy when you wake up. Um, you're going to feel better once you finally wake up, but that's going to take 10 or 15 minutes, right? To, to where you're back to, okay, I'm awake now, right? Um, so if we go the full hour and a half, right, we've gone the whole cycle. We've gone light into deep, you know, and done body recovery. We've gone into REM for mental recovery and then into light to wake up, right? And so that's that's the ideal situation. It's either 20 minutes where you never go into deep sleep and you're not groggy, <clears throat> or it's an hour and a half when you come through deep sleep and back to light sleep again. So that's if you want the an ideal way to do the nap, 20 minutes. Now, a trick that was taught to me by, um, now this was before everybody had phones and and you know, alarms on their phones and that sort of a thing. But the easiest way to do a nap where you don't have to have an alarm, it just happens naturally, hold some keys. Like lay down on the couch and hold a set of keys in your hand, right? In the hand that's going to be over the floor, right? And just and close your eyes, try to go to sleep, but you're holding onto the keys to keep them from falling down. At the point where you lose the ability to maintain the hold on those keys and your hand finally relaxes and they fall on the floor and make a noise to wake you up, that is the perfect time to wake up. You have just slipped into the, the sleep that's light sleep, but not you haven't passed into deep sleep yet. It's that perfect point. And every time I've done it, it's been like 17 minutes, <laughs> so it's 18 minutes, something like that. So it's right at that 15 to 20 minutes, which is an ideal nap time. So if you, for whatever reason, you don't, you know, have a device with you to set an alarm, hold something like keys or that's going to make a noise when it hits the floor to wake you up. And that's my little, my little sleep hack, right? Um, so just know that, you know, we have sleep cycles. It's around 90 minutes. And, you know, if you're going to be sleeping through the night, aim for an hour and a half, you know, a factor of an hour and a half. So three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, right? Um, I've gotten by many, many times on three hours sleep. When I could have gone to four, but it wouldn't it wouldn't have been good because I would have woken up in that deep sleep state. And especially that, that little amount of sleep, it's not good. So three hours is, be is better than four. Four and a half, ideal. Six is great. Uh, I've gone long term, long time on six hours of sleep a night with no ill effects. For me, seven and a half is the ideal. Right. Um, but just know that that's that's where you need to be. Hour and a half increments for overnight. And for a nap, it's either 20 minutes or an hour and a half, right? If you've only got 45 minutes for a nap, do 20 minutes. You'll thank me. All right. Sleep. It's definitely an important part of living your life to the third power. So until tomorrow, my friends, sleep well. Thank you for listening to the Third Power Life podcast. Before you go, one quick question for you. Where are you on the path of life? Are you just drifting through your life? Are you fully in command somewhere in between? Well, you can find out where you are now by taking my new commander survey. 
It will tell you where you are on your growth journey and how to move yourself to the next level. You can find the link on the screen or in the show notes. Now all I want to know now is, where do you stand?